Welcome back to the Silage Zone. Today we're going to be talking about the grow portion in regards to corn. So we've just experienced the most difficult planting season in the history of North America most likely, at least to date. And because of that, we've probably lost a little bit of yield potential, but we still have a crop in the field like we do here, V6 plus, that we want to take care of and make sure that we end up with the right amount of tons, as many as we can get, that still has the highest feed quality possible. So today we're just going to talk a little bit about nitrogen application along with sulfur. So how do we do that? Typically, if we're planting our crop late, we need to look at a lower yield potential than on the average. If I'm planting two weeks late, I'm probably looking at a 10% reduction in yield potential. If I'm planting three weeks later than normal, I'm probably looking at a 15% reduction. And if I'm up to five weeks late, it may be as high as 35%. So we look and see when we got it planted. We consider what we had carryover from the previous year as far as nitrogen credits, what we've already put on as far as nitrogen at planting perhaps, and then we consider what we still need to put on based on that. So for an example, let's say that we have a field that normally yields 200 bushels. And say that we got it planted two weeks late. So we're at 90% of yield potential. So at 180 bushel. Now I'm going to use a pretty high number, 1.2, to calculate the total nitrogen needs. But we've had a lot of moisture, probably a lot of leaching, denitrification. And so we're going to stay at the high end on that pounds of nitrogen per bushel of corn. So 180 times 1.2 1 is 216. Let's say that we had anywhere from 20 to 50 carryover from the previous year. Let's go with 40. Then let's say that we put on 30 with planting. So we've got 40 carryover, 30 that we put on at planting. Subtract that from the 216, we end up with 146 pounds. These are all guidelines that I'm providing if you're not utilizing a precision program such as in Circa. But these are good rules to go by to make sure that we've got enough nitrogen at the end of that growing period to make sure that we've got the yield potential we're after. Plus, we don't let that plant cannibalize the stock because it's short on nitrogen to end up making the grain. So that we end up with the highest NDFD product we can find along with the highest yield potential available. The other thing that I want to draw your attention to is most of the fields that I'm going into, I'm seeing sulfur de deficiency based on the intervenal chlorosis that we can see in this leaf here. And I'm seeing that everywhere I go. So when you do your side dress application, make sure that you're putting on sulfur with that if you need to. Typically we're wanting to apply somewhere between 25 and 35 pounds of sulfur for a year. So whatever you've put on already, perhaps in your planting, what was already in the field, subtract that out and put on the additional when you put on the nitrogen. So to wrap up, consider what yield potential you still have left in the field. Consider what you had for carryover plus what you put on for planting. Subtract that from whatever yield potential that is times 1.2 for your nitrogen. And then you'll know what you need to put on at side dress so that we end up finishing that crop for the highest yield potential with the highest NDFD potential in that stock. And also include your sulfur when you make that application so that we end up with a healthy plant with the highest tons. Thanks until next time. That concludes this Pioneer Growing Point Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.